Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. In this lecture, we are going to uh, explain our concept of bonding that not only explain the bonding in different molecules, or rather, it also explains the shapes and geometries of the molecule. And uh, this concept is called as orbital hybridization. Orbital hybridization actually explains how uh, the bonding in different molecules happens as against the electronic configuration, general electronic con configuration of the atoms that we normally explain while discussing the uh, ground state, uh, ground states of the uh, atoms of different elements. So, uh, to start with, we have first uh, look at the electronic configuration of uh, the elements from second uh, period of the periodic table and uh, these elements we are going to discuss here these uh, uh, first of all uh, boron 5 carbon 6 nitrogen 7 oxygen 8 so if you look at the electronic configuration of these elements we see that uh, in the ground state they have in case of boron two electrons in 1s orbital two electrons in 2s orbital and one electron in one of the three degenerate p orbitals because we have three degenerate p orbitals so the one electron it may be in px py or pz because these are same in energy as well as their shape is also same. In case of carbon, we have 1s2, 2s2, 2px1, 2py1, 2pz0. For nitrogen, 1s contains 2 electrons, 2s2 two electrons, 2px1, two 2py1, two 2pz1. Two For oxygen, we have uh, 1s2, 2s2, 2px2, 2py2, 2pz. Uh, sorry, 2py1 and 2pz1. 2py, 2pz1. So, according to this electronic configuration, that is for again the ground states of these atoms, we have only one unpaired electron in the valence shell of boron. Here we will be just considering the valence shells. So these are the valence shell electronic configuration. So only one electron in boron, two electrons in carbon, three electrons in nitrogen, two electrons in oxygen. According to basic rules for chemical bonding, the number of bonds that an atom could form, this is equal to number of unpaired electrons in its valence shell. So, according to that concept, in boron, only one unpaired electron is there. For carbon, there are two. For nitrogen, there are three. For oxygen, there are two. It means boron will form only one bond. Carbon, only two. Nitrogen, three. And oxygen, two bonds. But when we talk about the compounds of these compounds in actual situations, we see that boron forms three or four bonds. For example, we have boron, one of its compound BF3, here boron is making three bonds. When we look at another molecule of boron, that is B, 
F3. Along with NH3. Here, this boron is making four bonds. These are four bonds. Similarly, in the case of carbon, it makes it makes four chemical bonds, like in case of methane and all our organic compounds. It makes four bonds, and all these four bonds are similar. So, how can we explain the bonding in carbon compounds? For nitrogen, we have okay, it makes three bonds in ammonia and most of its compounds. But what about when it reacts with one more hydrogen positive, or we can say a proton? in order to make ammonium ion here this nitrogen making three bonds okay this is also three but here it's making four bonds four bonds how is it possible similarly for oxygen in case of water it's understandable that uh, it makes two bonds But when it attains one more proton, it's converted to hydronium ion. Here, this oxygen is making three bonds. How can we explain this? So the answer lies in the concept of optical hybridization. Now we will explain these atoms and uh, bonding by these atoms in somewhat detail. Now we talk about carbon. In case of carbon, we have seen that the electronic configuration will be that in the valence shell we have uh, four electrons, two paired and two unpaired electrons. So complete electronic configuration is 1s containing two electrons. Then 2s has two electrons, 2px1, 2py1, 2pz0. So the valence shell contains total number of electron four but the number of bonds that could be formed these are only two based upon the number of unpaired electron but carbon as we have explained it makes four bonds in uh, all the carbon compounds in order to explain this we take the valence cell electronic configuration of carbon and uh, draw it um, increasing order of energy suppose this is the axis of energy and along this axis the orbitals we draw at the specific energy levels for example this one and then for P this one only one S is there but there are three P the electronic configuration according to uh, this statement is two electrons In the 2s orbital and 
and one electron each in any of the two p orbitals. So the first process that will happen here, this is that uh, the ground state of carbon atom, it will be first disturbed, that is by taking up a little amount of energy, one electron from the first uh, 2s orbital, it will be promoted to 2p z or the empty p orbital and the new state for carbon it will be like the 2s orbital and the three p orbitals are here the electronic configuration now will be one electron here and one electron in each of the p orbitals 2s 2px 2py 2pz so now we have four electrons available and we want four electrons in order to make four covalent bonds for carbon. So now it seems that carbon is ready to make four bonds. But if you look carefully, three orbitals, they are similar orbitals, whereas the fourth one, that is the 2s orbital, this is different from this. So if these three make covalent bonds, these bonds will be somewhat similar, but this bond will be entirely different. So it means carbon will be making three bonds that are mutually similar, and the fourth bond, it will be different with respect to energy as well as the electron density. So, or the shape of the electron density. It means yet something else has to be done before carbon could make four covalent bonds. Because all the covalent bonds that carbon makes, for example, in case of a simple molecule uh, methane, CH4, these are similar. So we need four similar orbitals. So what may happen next? This is that in this state of carbon that we uh, call as the uh, excited state, that is formed from the ground state of carbon. In this excited state, mixing of the orbitals of different energies and shapes, this happens. And this mixing may be of different types. For example, this mixing may be that uh, the all of the p orbitals they mix up with the s orbital and this type of mixing will be called as the one s plus three p so it will be called as sp3 mixing similarly it may happen that 1s combines with only 2p. This will be another type of mixing and that, uh, that will be called as this is 1s plus p plus p so this is sp2 mixing. Still another one it may happen under circum uh, certain circumstances and it will be that 1s orbital combines with 1p orbital and this type of specific mixing will be called as the 
sp mixing now in this mixing because the orbitals of different energies and shapes these are combining together so whenever two different things combine together so as to give rise to something of a new shape energy or new characteristics the process is called as hybridization so this is what's happening here this is called as hybridization process so after this hybridization new orbitals are produced that will be having different energies suppose we are concentrating upon sp3 hybridization in that case by the mixing of four atomic orbitals previously s and p orbitals four new orbitals of entirely different energies and shapes as compared to the pre pre-mixed orbitals will be produced but mutually they will be having same energy and shape and electron densities suppose these are here one two three four and these four orbitals will be having one electron each so one 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 and one because these are formed by mixing of 1s and 3p so these are called as the sp3 one of the sp3 hybridized orbitals the second one the third one the fourth one as many atomic orbitals will be combining together as many new atomic orbitals called hybridized orbitals will be produced so here we have three sp3 hybridized orbitals produced now these are mutually having similar amount of energy same amount of energy but their energies are different from the energies of the combining or the mixing orbitals but mutually these are similar their shapes will be mutually similar but entirely different from the shapes of the combining orbitals. Now we look at the shapes as well as the arrangement of these uh, hybridized orbitals. The orbitals that are mixing together are hybridizing together in order to give rise to the hybrid orbitals. Here we were talking about 2s orbital and uh, 2p orbitals. So first the First, add uh, 2s orbital. Suppose this is 2s orbital plus 3p orbitals. Now, the p orbitals are 3 in number. having same shapes similar sh uh, shapes similar energies but different orientation in three-dimensional space suppose these are our coordinate axis and we want to make here of our p orbitals that are mixed up together with the s orbital suppose the one along y-axis is this one along x-axis and the one along p-axis like this so If you remove the coordinate axis in order to make the picture clear, it will be one, 
like this. Give some shading so that these orbitals look beautiful. Okay, so these are our p orbitals. They are along x, y, and z axis. This is px, py, this one pz, and this one is our s. They are belonging to second shell, so we write two along with their names. So these orbitals now they are going to mix up together in order to give rise to new orbitals. There are the hybridized orbitals. Now here we see that uh, the total number of orbitals that are mixing together. This is 4. So the new orbitals produced will also be 4. But when they mix up together, their shapes are changed as well as their orientation in the quadrant axis will be changed. When we have three orbitals of same shape, the maximum, the best configuration they could take or the best arrangement they could take, this is there must be 90 degree angles. This way the repulsion between the electronic clouds that are formulating these orbitals, this will be minimum. But when we uh, get the hybridized orbitals and four orbitals are produced, the best orientations are best arrangement for four orbitals that are having same shape, same energy and same electron density. It will be something like a tetrahedron so the shape of each orbital produced as a result of mixing will be like this they'll be having one lobe larger one and the other lobe will be smaller one second orbital will be here Small lobe, the third one, smaller lobe, and the fourth one. So these are uh, three sp3 hybridized orbitals. They contain similar electron density, same shapes, and specific orientation. And specific orientation in three-dimensional space. Now if you talk about the uh, the angles between these orbitals these are actually, for example, we are considering first these two orbitals. This angle or this angle or this angle, all the angles are similar and all of these angles they are of uh, 109.5. And this is the angle for a regular tetrahedron. It is uh, the arrangement of these orbitals in space is just like a regular tetrahedron that is having four faces and the angle between the edges of these faces and these are 109.5. On the back side we have this on the bottom and back side these two faces so this is the case for sp3 hybridization 
Now, if we talk about, so this is SP3, hybrid. So, uh, start discussion of other two types of hybridization in case of uh, the second period elements. So, this in the, uh, in the first of the other two types, this is when 1s orbital combines with 2p orbitals. So, this situation, this is here, s plus p plus p so 2p orbitals they will be mixing up with 1s orbital and the other p will remain at its particular position so three new orbitals will be produced and uh, here suppose these three orbitals are given here This is their position. They will be having three electrons, and uh, these three electrons we put up here. One electron here, one here, one here. And these orbitals, these will be called as sp2 hybrid orbitals sp2 hybrid orbitals and the one orbital that has not taken part in the hybridization process it will remain as such at its particular position this is the 2pz it may be 2py or 2px also so we can say out of these three p orbitals to any of uh, these two, this will be taken by the hard decision process, and the one will be remaining at its particular position. So, all of these sp2 hybridized orbitals they will be having here 33.33% s character and 66.66% p character. So, the energy will be more, uh, more towards p as compared to S. When we look at the shapes of these sp2 hybridized orbitals, we see that these have, um, okay, we go to the previous layer, where we were having the p orbitals. So now the shapes of sp we will be starting from the same 3p and 1s orbital and they will be combining together mixing up together in order to give rise to what we call as the sp2 hybridized orbitals suppose we are going this way combination of 2p and 1s orbital will produce three new orbitals. These three new orbitals will be aligned in a uh, single plane. Their shapes will be similar to p, that is one lobe will be larger, the other one will be smaller. So these will be like larger and smaller loop, larger and smaller, like this. Okay, we make it a little bit in a somewhat beautiful way. This will be like this. So now their orientation is such that the angle between these orbitals this will be 120 degree and these are present in the same plane we can show the plane like 
suppose we have a First we select and then we go towards transverse of that plane. So we can see they are in the same plane. So they are coplanar. It will be better if we show these orbitals in a different way, that is in a way when these are present like um, suppose one orbital we show here is smaller lobe another one is smaller lobe and the third one like this so they are the hybridized orbitals one orbital, as we have seen in the previous layer, that that orbital is unhybridized. It's not taking us. Uh, sorry, not this one. One orbital was not taking part in the hybridization process. Yeah, this one. So this orbital is present at its particular position so we can show the unhybridized orbital like here with a different color it will be having somewhat okay we change the color a little bit so that we may distinguish it from the other orbitals so this is the unhybridized orbital unhybridized so this is 2pz suppose and these orbitals are sp2 so sp2 orbitals and one unhybridized orbital now we look at the case of our Now we'll look at the case of sp hybridization. In sp hybridization, we know that 1s and 1p will be taking part, and 2p orbitals will not take part in the hybridization process. So what will be the result? That only two hybrid orbitals will be produced. And because these will be formed by the mixing of 1s and 1p orbital, so these are called as sp hybrid orbitals sp hybridized orbitals and 2p orbitals they will be present at their specific positions like this is 2py 2pz only 2px it will combine with s so it will be having a 50% s character and 50% p character if you look at the alignment of these orbitals it will be like we have seen in case of the sp3 and sp2 that these are the alignments of these orbitals 
DMX for Cobras. PDR controls and uh, then we have hybridized P. Let me talk about the SP hybridized orbitals. Then this will be like only two orbitals are produced so they will be aligned at an angle that will be separating it, these two orbitals maximum distances and the there are two unhybridized orbitals these two unhybridized orbitals now we will show like this is one of the unhybridized and this one the second unhybridized orbital. First one, the second one. And these are the hybrids. So the angle between these hybridized orbitals will be one hundred and eighty degrees. So here we have these three types of hybridization and their respective hybridized orbitals along with unhybridized orbitals. Now you go towards explaining some spe specific examples that are actually make use of these hybridized orbitals. So one by one we will discuss these examples. First of all the examples that make use of sp3 hybridization. We take now a few examples that make use of uh, hybridization process in order to explain the ball formation as well as structure of their molecules. So first uh, we have an example of uh, simplest organic compound named methane bonding in methane CH4 here carbon is making four chemical bonds and these are single bonds whenever there is single bond single bond is always a sigma bond so all of these bonds are sigma bonds between carbon and hydrogen. In order to explain these bonds we uh, make use of hybridization concept but before we discuss the hybridization uh, concept for making this methane, uh, methane or methane molecule we look at the structure the experimental results about the structure of this molecule the experiment results are that this molecule exists as a tetrahedral molecule four hydrogens are attached to carbon carbon is present in the center of the tetrahedron and hydrogens they represent the vertices of uh, the tetrahedron so the overall structure it becomes like regular tetrahedron like this 
So the tetrahedral geometry is created as a result of sp3 hybridization. So this carbon must be sp3 hybridized. So if you draw the orbitals for this carbon, this is like we have uh, one sp3 hybridized orbital, the second one, the third one, and the fourth one on the back side with its smaller lobe towards front side. So this is the carbon atom with four sp3 hybridized orbitals. It will be making four covalent bonds with four hydrogen atoms. Suppose this carbon reacts with four hydrogens. A hydrogen contains its electron in the first s orbital. So we show the first s orbital as phosphorus circle. Otherwise, this is a sphere. So this is circle. is hydrogen on a orbital it will be combining with this carbon in order to make ammonia molecule uh, sorry this methyl molecule so this molecule will be what like We just paste here, and we have then these four hydrogen atoms that will be reacting with this carbon. Multiply by four. So these hydrogens now they are bonding with this carbon that is sp3 hybridized carbon and an ammonium uh, and uh, a methyl molecule results. Similarly, if we want to explain some other molecules that make use of sp3 hybridization, here we have ammonia and water molecule. Suppose if we utilize the same concept for explaining those molecules. Now we discuss the structure of another molecule that makes use of sp3 hybridization. Now the molecule is uh, ethane or ethane. Ethane molecule has a structure carbon carbon bond that each carbon is making three bonds with three hydrogen atoms so all the bonds here these are sigma bonds or these are single bonds the carbon atoms in in this molecule both of the carbons these are sp3 hybridized so we consider the 
standardization process for making a structure of this molecule. Suppose this is one of the carbon. There's one hybridized orbital. Second hybridized orbital. The third one. And the fourth one. So these are four sp3 hybridized orbitals. Similarly, the other carbon will be having similar uh, hybridization and it will be having four sp3 hybridized orbitals one two three and four the smaller lobes you can show like this and they will be reacting with six hydrogen atoms that are containing six s orbitals that is one s orbital so when these atoms react together they give rise to a molecule of ethane or ethane so the molecule will be represented like this s orbital or oh sorry sp3 hybrid orbital will be combined with another sp3 hybrid orbital from the other atom so we can show here that uh, these two orbitals they will be overlapping like this So this overlap will result into a sigma bond. And here we are having these hybridized orbitals. Each of these hybridized orbital will be overlapping with S orbital of hydrogen atoms and the result will be the formation of this ethane or ethane molecule. So there are formed five coval uh, sorry seven covalent bonds in this molecule and here we are having these overlapping areas where the sigma bonds are being formed. Now we know that uh, both of these carbons they have sp3 hybridized orbitals so these sp3 hybridized orbitals they are overlapping with hydrogens as well as two sp3 hybridized orbital they are overlapping between themselves so this bond
is formed as a result of sp3 sp3 overlap so it will be called as sigma sp3 sp3 and these bonds are formed as a result of s sp3 overlap so these are called sigma s sp3 so six bonds are sigma s sp3 and one bond is sigma sp3 sp3 i'll take the examples of molecules that uh, contain sp2 hybridized carbons and uh, sp hybridized carbons so a molecule that contains sp2 hybridized carbon this is uh, ethene in ethene molecule two carbon atoms are joined by carbon carbon double bond and each carbon further is attached to two hydrogen atoms now here are the bond between uh, the two bonds between carbon and carbon they contain one bond is sigma and the other one is pi a pi bond is always formed by um, unhybridized orbitals whereas the sigma bonds they may be formed by hybridized or unhybridized orbitals so this molecule contains five sigma bonds and one pi bond and for making one pi bond we need one unhybridized p orbital so this carbon that has uh, three sigma bonds for formation of three sigma bond it will need three hybridized orbitals and three hybridized orbitals are produced in hybridization process that we call as sp2 hybridization so both of these carbons these are sp2 hybridized so we draw the structure of this molecule like we have carbon one of the sp2 hybridized carbon uh, orbital the second sp2 hybridized orbital and the third sp2 hybridized orbital so these are the three sp2 hybridized orbital one orbital on each atom this is unhybridized we'll show it with a different color so the unhybridized orbital is here this one so this is the unhybridized one in pink color and in yellow color these are the sp2 So this is the case for one hydrogen the other hydrogen it will be having similar case and their hybridized orbitals they will be overlapped here in order to make this bond and the other two orbitals are shown like this so these are the small loops so we have these sp2 hybridized orbitals there will be one unhybridized orbital just like that is here this carbon also so this is unhybridized one now oh, these hydrogens these are making sigma bonds with these hybridized sp2 orbitals suppose we show with some different color let's it be a blue color so one hydrogen second hydrogen similarly one hydrogen second hydrogen and they are making their bonds with 
carbons. So we show their overlapping areas like this in shader area. So here in this molecule we are having these five sigma bonds. This sigma bond is between sp2 and s, that is the 1s. sp2, 1s, sp2, 1s, sp2, 1s. Now we are having two p orbitals that are not uh, hybridized, so they will be taking part in the process we call as the pi bond formation. So they will be mixing up together this way. We can show they are mixing in a way that is, uh, we just remove these areas here. And these unhybridized P orbitals, their electron densities will be, although this is much more exaggeration while drawing the structure, but we want to just explain the formation of this bond. Otherwise, this distance is very small and these orbitals could very easily interfere in order to make their pi bonds. So their electron density is mixing up as is result this pi bond is formed. So this is the case for ethene here, the carbons are, these carbons are sp2 hybridized. In case of another molecule, that is, sorry, ethyne. Acetylene, this molecule has a structure that has carbon carbon triple bond and each carbon further attached to two hydrogens, uh, one hydrogen. So, total two hydrogens are there in this molecule. So, here we are having one sigma bond between two carbon atoms and two sigma bond between carbon and hydrogen, and two pi bonds are there. For making two pi bonds, we need two unhybridized p orbitals. So, when two unhybridized p orbital are there, only one p orbital will be taking part in the hybridization process. So, these carbons are sp hybridized carbons. So, this one as well as this one, these are sp hybridized. So, the structure of this molecule we can explain like we are having two carbons that are sp hybridized their hybridized orbitals are shown in a linear way the smaller lobe of this orbital the smaller lobe of this orbital and the second atom it will be having similarly to sp hybridized orbitals these orbitals for these carbons they are overlapping so this is sp sp overlap resulting into sigma bond formation and here two hydrogen atoms will be combining with other hybridized orbital that is the s or uh, sp hybridized orbital will be having two bonds here and now both of these carbons they are having two unhybridized orbital each. Unhybridized, unhybridized. So the third, uh, second unhybridized here and here. So these are the unhybridized orbitals that are shown in pink and red colors so here 
we have seen that uh, these bonds are uh, here this bond is because of SP S hybridization uh, uh, sorry overlapping so this is called as Sigma S SP and this one this is Sigma SP SP and here these orbitals now will combine together will overlap with each other in order to make this pi bond similarly here they will be making pi bond and these red orbitals they will be making sigma bonds or oh, sorry pi bonds so we can show these structures as uh, towards front this is towards back So here we have uh, the two pi bonds that are shown in red and pink color. This is one of the pi bonds. So we are having these as one pi bond and this one as the second pi bond. So Here in this molecule, we can see that there are two pi bonds and three sigma bonds. Now we look at some more examples for explaining the hybridization concept and uh, the bonding as well as structure of those molecules. We have an example of uh, Na3 that is ammonia We have example of H2O or water and we have example of BF3 or boron trifluoride. In case of example of ammonia this nitrogen is making three bonds with hydrogen. If you look at the electronic configuration of nitrogen that is central atom in this molecule, nitrogen has atomic number of seven. The electronic configuration is 1s contains two electrons, 2s, two electron, 2px1, 2py1, 2pz1. In the valence shell, we are having these five electrons, out of which three electrons are unpaired, so ammonia can make three bonds. 
but in actuality this is not simply that these p orbitals they will be making uh, three bonds rather nitrogen atom undergoes sp3 hybridization in ammonia and three uh, four sp3 hybridized orbitals are produced and these four sp3 hybridized orbitals they will be having one of these orbitals will be having two electron that it will be filled up completely and the other other uh, three sp3 hybridized orbitals they will be having one electron each and they will be making three covalent bonds so nitrogen in ammonia molecule is sp3 hybridized similarly in case of water molecule we have oxygen that is o8 one is 2 2 px 2 2 py1 2 pz1 two electrons are available there for bond formation but before bond formation hybridization uh, happens and uh, the, in the valence shell orbitals in between valence shell orbitals and uh, oxygen atom is again sp3 hybridized hybridized So both of these examples uh, have the center atom with sp3 hybridization. So we'll draw the orbitals for sp3 hybridization, both of these examples. So in case of the first example, ammonia, the nitrogen atom undergoes sp3 hybridization. And these are the hybrid orbitals. And they contain two electron here, one electron here, one here, and one here. These unpaired electrons they make bonds with hydrogen 1s that brings along with it its one electron. So there is pairing and these sigma bonds are formed. And these sigma bonds are sigma s sp3 and inside this molecule the one sp3 hybridized orbital that is containing a uh, lone pair of electron it will remain it's uh, as such because it's uh, it containing paired electrons so no bond formation will take place here now if you look at the geometry of this molecule although this looks like a, a tetrahedron but because the electron density within this lone pair uh, within this orbital that is because of two electrons and two electrons are attracted only towards nitrogen atom whereas the inside the other bonds that are the sigma bonds the electron density is shared between two nuclei that is nucleus of nitrogen and those of the hydrogen so this electron density will not be too much free to be contained in larger area or fill up a larger area rather this electron density will be more expanded and it will exert forces of repulsion over the other electron densities so as a result this electron density exerts forces of repulsion over the other electron densities and this molecule it it acquires the shape of somewhat because of this expanded electron density the hydrogen atoms they come a little bit close and this angle 
it becoming equal to 109.5 it is less than 109.5 now we look at water molecule in case of water molecule similarly three uh, four sp three hybridized orbitals are there one sp3 hybridized orbital the second one the third one the fourth one now they will be having two lone pairs that is here suppose we show with the help of just dots here also dots these are filled orbitals although these are sp3 hybridized only two orbitals are there that could make bonds and they contain only one electron each so they will overlap with hydrogen that will bring its only electron they will be overlapping and as a result they will form two bonds between oxygen and hydrogen so here at the water molecule we have sigma bonds between s sp3 sigma s sp3 and two orbitals they are not taking part in the uh, in the bond formation process now again here in these orbitals the electron density is much expanded because this is only being attracted towards oxygen nucleus whereas the electron density of the other orbitals that are the making sigma bond this is actually shared between two nuclei that is nucleus of oxygen as well as hydrogen so the result will be this is not too much expanded so the force of attraction that will be exerted by the lone pair electron density upon these hydrogens both of these hydrogens this will be very strong and the bond angle it will be further decreased as compared to in case of ammonia so this bond angle this is much less as compared to 109.5 so these two example they contain sp3 hybridized atoms now when we look at this example that is boron trifluoride it contains boron that is sp2 hybridized and it makes three bonds with fluorine atoms that's again sp uh, that is uh, uh, whose uh, p orbital it will be making bond with this fluorine so as a so in case of uh, bh3 molecule the center atom that is boron this is sp2 hybridized and fluorine that is uh, the atom at the corners it will be uh, it's actually sp3 hybridized so the bonding in bf3 molecule is like um, we have uh, boron here boron electronic configuration is 1s 2 electrons 2s 2 electrons 2px only 1 electron 2py is 0 2pz is 0 so when sp2 hybridization happens here 
we see that uh, the boron is sp2 and fluorine is sp3 so when boron contain sp2 hybridized orbital one electron will be promoted to one of the p and one p always remains empty in case of boron that's why a bf3 is considered as electron deficient molecule that's why it could react further with uh, some electron donating species like ammonia so the sp3 hybridized orbital if we draw for boron this will be like this is the center and here we have one sp2 hybridized orbital boron this is the second one this is the third one and one orbital will be there that will be unhybridized and it, it will also be empty these hybridized orbitals of boron contain one electron each and the unhybridized orbital it's completely empty it doesn't have any electron so when fluorine comes by bringing one electron in the sp3 hybridized orbital it will overlap with three sp2 hybridized orbitals of boron electron pairing will happen and bonds will be formed between boron and fluorine uh, fluorine atoms so this is the case of bf3 where uh, sp2 hybridized orbitals of boron overlap with sp3 hybridized orbitals of fluorine so this bond is sigma sp2 sp3 and the angle between these atoms uh, these bonds it will be 120 degree that is the normal angle for sp3 hybridized orbitals so these examples are explaining the concept of are making use of concept of uh, sp3 sp2 and sp hybridization we'll be utilizing the concept of hybridization extensively while we'll be discussing the structures of different organic molecules as well as we'll be discussing the mechanisms of uh, the organic reaction